Hey everyone, welcome to the first match of Simic, uh, Simic Warp Control. Today we are playing Golgari Hardened Scales. So, this is the Simic version of uh, Teamer Warp Control. Uh, sorry, Teamer Warp Midrange. Oh boy, I'm going to get confused between those two. So the Simic version is a bit more, I suppose you could say, streamlined, a bit more focused since it's dropping red. You also don't have Renin 6, which means you have one less... Uh, loop outlet with uh, with warp uh, time warp, but that's okay because you are playing the control game here, and that has its benefits over the mid range build. So our opening hand uh, was pretty decent because of the amount of Utopia sprawls. Winding constrictor comes down. Now we have two time warps in hand and three Utopia sprawls, so it's a bit overkill, but not bad. Not bad. So we could untap our breeding pool. And now if I was smart, I would have made that first Utopia Sprawl green. And we would have been able to play both Utopia Sprawl. We would have been able to play all three Utopia Sprawls essentially this turn. But because I didn't think that through, uh, it didn't happen. So Mana Gorgia Hydra comes down. Our opponent's going to swing in for two. All right. So we have two Jaces. Two time warps and a euro. I think we have uh, a tad too many jaces. What I would probably do now is cast Tarmogoyf and Utopia Sprawl and get that over with. Issue here is that Mana Gorger is going to keep getting bigger and bigger. And that's really a problem. Like, a big, big, big problem. An almost unfair problem. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, I, I can see it because at this point there's just really no way, no way of getting out of that. So, Entrancing Melody would make sense. We could steal their big creatures. Spreading Seas to kind of cut them off from green or black. Or both, ideally. They, do, they also run Utopia Sprawls, so a Spreading Seas cast would also make the Utopia Sprawls fall off. And there we go. So that game one was pretty fast, unfortunately. We just had no way of answering a creature that big. So we will start off with our Utopia Sprawl here. I'm going for green. We have Spreading Seas, which is pretty good. I would almost certainly cast that now on the forest. But I would almost want to wait more than anything. Because we could allow them to waste the Utopia Sprawl first. Hardened Scales comes down. Alright. So again... Now we can choose to wait a bit longer, or we can just cast Spreading Seas. I think right now I would cast Spreading Seas. Target the forest, cut him off at least one green. Slow him down a bit, that's the goal here. And we draw Tamiyo, which is pretty good draw. Sorry, I put on the fetches for an overgrown tomb. Nihil Spell Bomb is probably waiting to see a Euro, but it's gonna be it's gonna pose a problem for the Tamio plan as well. We'll see when our opponent decides to crack it. So Utopia Sprawl comes down on their forest. And we get our fifth land. Well technically fourth, but it's five of Utopia Sprawl. So what do we do here? Now we can play Time Warp and get a free turn, but what are we going to be accomplishing? We have a 1-2 Tarmogoyf, so... Not really getting much out of there. I think Tamyo probably makes sense. Now what's going to help here is that the, the plus one ability is going to grow our Tarmogoyf. Almost certainly. Unless we draw four lands, which would be horrible. So we name Time Warp. We get one. 
No, we don't get one. Sorry, that was a time warp I already had in my hand. Wishful thinking. We don't, but we get Euro. This would probably elicit a spell bomb. Yeah, there we go. That's what I thought. That's okay. Our time warp is now 2-3. So, we're fine at the moment. Hardened Scale's not doing much, so we're okay. Our opponent's probably flooding on lands right now. That's to our benefit. Corpse Jack Menace is hilarious, because I only ever played that card in casual. But it's interesting to see it here. Okay, cool. So now we have, in theory, one, two, three, four, four consecutive turns, if we really wanted to. We're not going to, but we could. Um, because we could cast Time Warp, get an extra turn, cast Time Warp, get an extra turn, Tamio minus three twice, get Time Warp twice, get all those free turns. But, in, but actually, we're in a better position now. So we're going to cast our first Time Warp. We're going to get our turn. We're going to attack in with our five. Well, attacking with our five, six would be a bit scary here. But they would lose their main creature. So they're probably going to not block. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we get another Time Warp, which is excellent. Unfortunately, it would mean that we lose. Okay, so our okay, so we didn't have to think much more than that because our opponent just realized... We're going to get a bunch of free turns, and they are not interested in it. Now, we, we what I would have done is I would have kept playing Tarmogoyf, uh, sorry, Time Warp, until I got enough mana to play Tarm Tarmogoyf and Time Warp at the same time. But realistically, we would have just kept attacking them, and we would have softlocked them there with Tamio. And that's, that's basically the power of Tamio. If you have two Time Warps somewhere in your hand or graveyard, and you have Tamio in play you can be pretty close to soft locking your opponent. It really depends on where you are in the game. So our opening hand was bad, so we pretty much had to mulligan there. This hand... I... do not like it. But considering that we are playing an opponent that is extremely explosive, I am scared to go down to 5. So this is just going to have to do. Ironically, we now have two time warps in hand. We gotta thank the RNG gods for that. We'll play our Arbor Elf, mimic our opponent, see what they have on their turn two. Utopia Sprawl. Well, we don't have that. Uh, let's see what else is gonna come down. Gyre Sage. Alright, we have our Tarmogoyf. Now, the question is do we play Tarmogoyf or do we keep our Remand mana up? Looks like I wanna keep Remand mana up. I think that's a smart move. Our. our Opponent is almost certainly going to try and cast something. Not worth it to remand Utopia Sprawl. I'd rather wait for a bigger ticket creature or a bigger ticket spell. That's going to be good enough. We drive. Uh, we uh, draw Vapor Snag, which is actually pretty good here, because if one of their creatures just gets out of control big, we can just Vapor Snag them, and they have to restart, which is pretty good. So our opponent's going to come in for two. We draw Tamio. Not necessarily a card we want to play at the moment. I think Tarmogoyf probably makes more sense. And Vapor, Snab Vapor Snagging may be important here as well. But I don't see the need to rush. It looks like I was contemplating it here. I don't think I need to do anything just yet. Yeah. Let's just wait. So plus one plus one counters are going to be flown around. We're going to let that happen for now. Okay, it looks like I've had enough, so I'm just going to I'm going to kick him out from now. Okay, cool. So Gyre Sage went back into their hand. They're going to have to restart that entire process. That's good. That's a good tempo play. And I call this deck Simic Warp Control, but there's really more tempo control tempo. Not sure quite yet how to how to phrase it, but I think control is probably more accurate. Alright, so our opponent is getting wide quickly. So, now remember what I said last game. We have two time warps in hand, and we have Tamio. So I'm almost certainly going to play Tamio this turn. Uh, 
Oh, no, okay, so I go to time warp, the time warp route instead. I guess that makes sense because there's no way I would be able to successfully uh, protect Tamyo. Wilt is not going to do anything for me right now. So I can choose to time warp again. Again, it's not a loss. We are getting extra turns. That means we are getting extra draws. We are getting extra combat steps. Unfortunately, we're not fighting. But it's better than nothing. So I'm going to call out Euro. And I get it. I get one Euro in hand. That's pretty good. At this point, we need a big creature to kind of deal with the creatures that are being built up on the other end. And Euro is the answer. So you have to keep in mind that we shouldn't always rush for time warp. Yes, taking free turns is fun. But it's not necessarily what we need to rush to. Sometimes there are other cards we want to get. And that's where Tamio really makes games, uh, makes decision making complex. Because it's all a gamble anyway. But keep in mind, anything you mill, you could then bring back with Tamio's minus three. So it's pretty good. In this case, we made our Tarmog Wave a 4-5, which is currently bigger than all the other creatures they have on the battlefield. Mist Cutter Hydra is really not a card I want to see. It's really a card I do not want to see. I just can't deal with it. I'm going to have no choice but to block with my Tarmog Wave. Which is really, really unfortunate. Miss, Miss Cutter Hydra is, is posing currently a, a very, very big problem for me. So I'm going to Time Warp. And get a Time Warp back from the Graveyard. We draw a Vapor Snag, which unfortunately can't target Miss Cutter Hydra. So again, we're we're in a bit of a pickle here. Looks like I'm gonna time warp again. So I'm gonna pray for time warp. I don't get it. But I get another Euro. So I do get Euro into the graveyard, which means I can also now cast Euro. I can escape it. Here I tell my opponent I'm looking for more land. Ironically, I didn't realize that our opponent was also on one land, but that's okay. I mean, look what they've been able to cast with that one overgrown tomb. So Utopia Sprawl was actually a good draw here. We now have access to six mana. And it looks like I'm targeting Time Warp with my Tamio. There we go. So we got our free turn. Looks like I'm going to Vapor Snag the Gyre Sage. Now, unfortunately, again, we have no threats here. So even though we were able to get our time warps we just don't have a threat which is a problem so we look for time warp again instead we get nothing now we can escape euro let's see what we draw we don't draw land unfortunately So what do we do here? I think, yeah, getting Utopia Sprawl into that force is going to be good, because then we can untap with our Arbor Elf and have uh, three mana, essentially. And we can cast our Arbor Elf, or we can cast Euro. But I don't think we want to cast Euro right now. And we're going to cycle Wilt, because at this point, there's nothing we can do. 
Breeding pool was a good draw, though. So, essentially, we just have to survive this turn. I'm just trying to be a good sport there, apologize, apologizing to our opponent for the long turn that I took. Uh, but there was just so many decisions to make, as you can see. So our opponent gets their second land, and now they have seven mana at their disposal. As you can see, game three is going in for the long one. Our opponent now has ten mana, and walking ballista. Great. That's just what I wanted to see. Walking Ballista. Probably is going to shoot down our Tarmogoyf. Uh, sorry, our Tamiyo. Okay, not yet. First is going to take out our Arbor Elves. It could take out Tamiyo, though. There we go. So that was fair, right? <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. So we draw a Tarmogoyf. It could be a 6-7, which is decent. It would mean they would have to pump Walking Ballista quite a bit. And here I'm thinking, okay, do I steal a creature? Which creature would I steal? This looks like I'm going to steal Gyre Sage. It's a 5-6, it's a decent size. And now I can also cast my Tarmogoyf. And get Gyre Sage to become a 6-7. So that's all in all a pretty good attack. Uh, sorry, a pretty good play. Question is, do I attack in now? No, I don't. Because Miss Cutter Hydra is just going to chump. It'll survive. Hero will not. So we need to deal with Walking Ballista ASAP. Ironically, if we had kept Wilt... We could have just targeted Walking Ballista and forced our opponent to just kill it off in response to the Wilt, but hey, it is what it is. So Walking Ballista now has <laughs> a bunch of counters on it. Just a bunch. And yeah, it could just start pinging away at our creatures, which pisses me off. So our opponent is creating a trillion more mana. And... Yep, just gonna keep tacking on more 1-1 uh, counters. I'm gonna have no choice but to block that stupid Ballista. Luckily we have a lot of mana and a lot of cards in our graveyard, so we can cast zero again, but we're not doing ourselves any favors here. Miscutter Hydra will die, which is a good thing. We needed that card gone. Walking Ballista, on the other hand, is not dying. And that's a problem. So now Walking Ballista is going to shoot down our Gyre Sage. Alright, well, nothing we can do there. It's going to die. There it goes. Walking Ballista is fun. Then again, I am abusing Time Warp in this deck, so I guess I shouldn't say anything. So we draw uh, yet another Euro. I think this sequence makes sense. Cast Euro first. Draw a card. It's a land. It's decent. Now we're going to escape our Euro. Well, one of them. Get rid of a bunch of cards that we don't need. And let's see what we draw. We draw a remand. Uh, it's not bad. We can't cast it, but it's not bad. And our opponent's going to have to keep doing what it's doing, which is, you know, pumping its ballista and attacking in. We have quite a few more Euro casts here. So they're going to have to do something. <laughs> they draw Utopia Sprawl, which is brutal. And this game is really grinding out now. Really, really grinding out. But it's okay. I, I think... In the end, the minute we get rid of this walking ballista... However, we can get rid of it. 
Uh, it's it's the game's gonna go to us. The first walking bliss has to die. So here we go, attacking in again. We have to block because if we don't block, they're gonna attack us in. They're gonna attack in, and they're just gonna kill us anyway. So why take the damage? Why 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 lose the life? Now we draw Tamio, and I think we just kind of have to play Tamio here. So I'm gonna do the minus three and target Wilt. And just force our opponent to get rid of that stupid walking ballista. So this is a good play. Tamiel dies. It's fine. It's fine. It really is. We're just going to cast Wilt and just get out of here. Walking ballista, go away. Yes, it's fine. It's going to ping us to death. It's okay. But we just really need to get rid of it. So this was a smart... I'm actually surprised that I saw this play, by the way. Um... Considering how I missed obvious things like this uh, sometimes, I'm just shocked that I had the uh, the clear mind to target Wilt with our Tamio. But, alright, so Gaia Sage is going to come down, alright. We can remand it. Draw a card, <laughs> we draw another Wilt, look at that. Well, now we're future Ballista Proof. Hardened Scales comes down. Well, it's not going to survive Wilt, luckily. And another time warp, and now things have gone in our favor. Like I told you, once Walking Ballista goes away, things will improve in our favor. So what do we want to do now? If I cast Time Warp, I get a free turn. And I can escape Euro next turn. Archmage's Charm is actually pretty good. And we have enough mana to have Archmage's Charm active our opponent's following turn. We've cast Euro so many times. Uh, I'm really happy it's still legal. I'm going to be sad when they ban Euro in Modern. I really am because, I mean, come on. It's Euro. It does so much, so many cool things. Don't ban it. Don't ban it yet. Don't ban it until, uh, I don't know, a couple years from now. Cool. Alright. So, now uh, we're just going to attack it with our Euro and have fun. Can't currently abuse Time Warp. We draw Jace. That might elicit a concession. Doesn't yet. We draw three. Tamio is one of them. That's beautiful. That's just beautiful. Play Tamio. Thing is, Tamio wouldn't survive, so. I think waiting probably makes sense. Alright, Mana Gorger Hydra comes down. We pretty much have to remand that. Uh, well, no, Archmage's Charm, actually. Much better than remand in this instance. And we win the game. Alright. So, game three was brutal. But we survived. Alright. Regardless of what our opponent threw at us, and at one point our opponent was throwing a 16-16 walking ballista at us. We still survived, <laughs> we managed to get through, and again, I, I this deck is just fun. I don't know what to say. It's a fun deck to play, it's not just time warp, I mean you can win without time warp, but time warp really, really helps. Even if you only cast time warp once or twice in a game, it just does so much for you. Especially if you're able to attack in those extra turns, you are getting free attacks, you're getting free draw steps, you're getting free everything with those extra turns. I mean, we all know that extra turns are powerful, but usually when you want to play turns, you're playing the, the, the mono blue turns deck in modern, and it's boring, let's be honest. And it plays a bunch of cards that also help your opponent, you know, that works against you, and it's just, you're just playing a trillion turns just to get to, I don't know, Emrakul or something, and it's not what, it's not what I want to do. I want to be interactive while I'm getting free turns. So, Simic Warp Control is an awesome version of the original deck that I based it off of, which is Teamer Warp Midrange. I can't wait to keep playing with this and sharing more matches with you. It's These are just two really fun decks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy my content in general, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. 
I would really appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter, share with your friends, uh, your playgroup, wh whatever it is. Uh, I would really, really appreciate your help in spreading the word about this channel. Thanks and have a good one.